Hello and welcome to this video about power. My name is Liz Scarf and in the video I'm going to cover just some brief definitions about the terms power, rank and privilege and then I'm going to describe uh, what are the characteristics that give people power, rank and privilege uh, and how we might categorise those. And to start with though I want to acknowledge my teachers in this space because these aren't actually really my ideas. I've kind of categorize them and, and, and describe them in a way that's a little different to my teachers but really Drs Arnold Mindell and Julie Diamond I really want to credit them with these ideas and I'm going to link uh, put some links in the notes uh, about where you can find out more about them and also share a couple of books with you at the end of the video um, that are really great source materials for this work. So to start with three definitions well just going to so de definitions about power, rank and privilege. So power really is very simply, let's say, choice and control. And it's also a little bit about comfort as well, because the more choice and control we have over our lives and in different situations, generally the more comfortable we are. And that's one of the reasons why when we've got a lot of power and rank, we sometimes don't know it because we actually don't feel much except just comfortable and comfortable isn't much of a feeling actually that gets our attention. When we don't have a lot of power, we feel uncomfortable and we feel unsafe, but, you know, when we don't have like choice and control and we're often much more aware of feeling unsafe and uncomfortable than we are when we feel comfortable. So that's a really brief, like mini definition of power. It's choice and control. Um, now rank, I use that interchangeably, those terms. Rank just kind of implies that the amount of power or choice and control you have in any particular context is relative to the other people around you. And so like there might be some scenarios where um, a particular qualification I have gives me high rank because nobody else has uh, such a great qualification in the little group that I'm in in that moment. But let's say I go into another group and everybody in that group has got like, like this super, super cool other higher level qualification, right? Now all of a sudden my rank is lower. My qualification hasn't changed, but my ranking in that system in that particular group has changed. So power doesn't necessarily, and our characteristics for power doesn't necessarily give us the same amount of rank in a situation, it just sort of depends comparatively at who else is around and what characteristics they have. Now, the third definition to sort of just drop in here as well very quickly is that around privilege. Now, privilege is like it's the benefits that you get from the rank and power you have. And the benefits generally come in kind of two flavors. One is like opportunities. So what kind of um, doors open or opportunities do you get from your rank, uh, from your power characteristics that other people without them don't get? And the other flavor is protection what pain and suffering and disadvantage do your characteristics save you from and so that's like a just a very brief way to think about privilege it's about opportunities and protections that you get from certain characteristics okay so i'm going to go into the characteristics now and jump over and show you and this should be downloadable there should be a link wherever you're watching this video to this little one page of pdf that's kind of just a really neat little way to kind of describe and lay out uh, different characteristics like where power actually comes from. Okay, so here's this little one, all in one page about power and the two main kinds of power, particularly from this, this uh, model uh, I'm talking about, the process work model. So on the left hand side, we've got social power, which then sort of splits into another two different kind of um, lists of characteristics. So social power comes from having personal attributes or characteristics that are aligned with the preferences of the dominant culture at that time. Now remembering that culture doesn't just refer to like a, a national or, or a particular state culture, but it can also be like your family of origin has a particular culture. There might be like a sports club you belong to or um, an activist group or anything like that. There's cultures within cultures within cultures. And so there's a dominant and marginalized cultural dynamics in all of those little kind of systems of culture. And so social character, social power comes from physical characteristics and structural characteristics. So the physical ones are things like 
height, size, age, gender, sexual orientation, skin color, ethnicity, your first language, health, uh, ability and disability. Now these, one thing that all these mostly have in common physical attributes or characteristics are hard to change. Some of these other aspects around power or attributes, they're easier to change than our physical aspects. And really, if I just grab one example, just to try to make sense of this idea about aligning with preferences. So let's say you're, um, let's talk about height, that there's a certain kind of height range that is acceptable for people, depending on their gender. Um, and if you sit within that height range, you're not going to really know that height actually is a thing that gives you more or less power. But if you if you like exceed that height by a lot or like you're shorter than that height by a lot, you know that you are outside the kind of preference range and that your height is going to give you kind of or, or you know, like your shortness or whatever. Shortism is a total thing, right? So like that either way, being outside that normal preference range is somehow going to impact on your rank and power. So your comfort and choice and control in different situations. Same applies to all the physical characteristics, just using height as one example. So structural characteristics or attributes within this social power section are things like your formal education levels, um, the socioeconomic class background you came from, your current economic situation, maybe you've changed sort of classes a little, maybe you haven't, um, the level of employment you have within a particular hierarchy, like either a receptionist or a CEO, like that's a structural aspect of rank. Uh, are you a member of a religion or what is your citizenship status? Or you're, if you have membership in a special or elite club, these are all kind of social ranks or kinds of social power. Now, over on the other side, we have personal power which comes from inner capacities developed from self-knowledge and growth. Mostly, sometimes we get really lucky and we have like a golden childhood and that gives us a lot of personal power. Um, but these enable you to sort of act in the world in accordance with your own values and your own goal, goals and can really buffer you from uh, low social rank at times. Not completely, uh, but can be uh, helpful. Now the psychological aspects, now th these aren't comprehensive um, list the, you know, they kind of cover a bit, but they're not uh, complete by any means. There's a ways and we could drill down into these mm -hmm. and extend them, uh, you know, heaps. But psychological kind of rank characteristics are things like resilience and self-awareness, um, growing from traumatic or difficult life experiences, um, being at ease with conflict or relative ease, um, valuing your own opinions and perceptions, even when others don't, and having emotional intelligence, which is, you know, the capacity to kind of notice and articulate and kind of facilitate and hold your own emotional experiences and also see and, and facilitate and validate those in others as well. Now, a lot of psychological rank is earned, like you have to work to get it. Um, and that most earned privileges sit on top of unearned privileges. Uh, so often the physical, any privileges you might get from physical aspects are generally unearned. You're just kind of born with that. Um, and psychological aspects, some you can be born with, like if you felt really loved as a child, your ideas and your feelings were really validated, that gives you quite a, a huge amount of personal power uh, compared to people who didn't have that experience. And that was unearned, absolutely. You kind of got lucky in your family system. Um, but the other psychological um, aspects of rank um, are very much earned and you should, often their ability to earn them does sit on privileges. Um, but not always. Sometimes it's a very tough road. There's no privileges. People work their ass off to build those. Um, the other category in personal is spiritual rank, spiritual characteristics. And that can mean a range of things. It doesn't, it's not about religion. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to believe in a God or a kind of God-like thing, um, but feeling like you belong, um, knowing your purpose in life, um, feeling that life is really meaningful, all those things can give you spiritual rank, as can a relationship to something divine or transcendent, um, or contact with, you know, the ineffable, something, you know, just kind of bigger than, than self. Um, 
also experiences where either you've been close to death or you've kind of facilitated and, and been with others who are dying um, and also people who are being born uh, and people who are birthing so being kind of close in those experiences can also give you a lot of spiritual um, insight and rank and kind of grow you in that way. So they're like the four main kinds of categories that sit in these kind of two areas of social and personal power. Now different cultures value different kinds of power. So in Western culture, we tend to have a pre we tend we, we tend to preference and invest very heavily, um, or therefore invest very heavily in structural power, and uh, and try to exclude other groups from getting that at times so we can have it. Like it's a very competitive kind of power because we can't all be the CEO. Now, there's a couple of downsides to social power. I mean, there's probably more than a couple, but two that really stick out. One is it's an unstable form of power because it is dependent on the judgments of other people. You're not actually in control over whether that characteristic is going to give you power or not, give you comfort, give you choice and control because it's dependent on what other people think about it. And it's also non-transferable. It only gives you power in that particular context. You can't just take that characteristic and have it give you choice and control in other contexts. So the CEO in an organization, that CEO rank only applies in that context. Maybe there's going to be a few other things with peers and networks and whatever else where it matters. But let's say like in their local football club on the weekends, it may not matter at all. And in fact, it may be a disadvantage because it may, you know, put distance between you know, the CEO person and some other people who don't have such high ranking jobs. So in that place, it could give, make someone feel less comfortable, less welcome, less like they belong. So it's a non-transferable um, rank characteristic. So sometimes um, over-investing in structural rank um, can really um, become a problem because we don't we can build a lot of structural power, but we never really feel very powerful. So that's where investing in psychological and spiritual rank actually can help because it is a more stable form of power. It's not dependent on other people's judgment. So let's say, you know, I've got lots of psychological rank and I go somewhere where say like my qualifications are like really low rank or something. And I could feel really uncomfortable there if I didn't have a lot of psychological rank supporting me. But my psychological rank, it's, it's uh, impervious. To the judgment of others based upon my my qualifications or something like I can still feel comfortable if I'm sitting there going oh, I might not have those qualifications but that doesn't mean that I'm not welcome here or it doesn't mean that I don't have something to contribute I think my ideas matter as well or, or whatever that is right if I can hold myself with my psychological rank it can buffer me from experiences of, of low structural rank now not always um, but it's uh, it's hugely helpful and it's stable. It's not based on judgment from others. Um, as long as I can have contact with it in myself, it's going to be helpful. I'm going to feel choice, control and comfort. It's personal power is also transferable. I can take that into any context and it is going to help me out. I'm going to feel like I have more choice. I'm going to feel more comfortable in any context because it's, it's not context dependent because it's a really internal experience. It doesn't rely on hierarchies or external judgments. So it, it moves with me wherever I go. So why does even learning about this kind of power, rank and privilege stuff matter? Well, there's, there's two, I mean, there's lots of great reasons, but two I'd say is if you're really interested in cultural repair work or a more equitable world, world you absolutely have to get your head around power, rank and privilege, especially if you come from a dominant cultural position. Um, it is absolutely imperative that you kind of understand where your high rank comes from, how you're using it and how it kind of um, uh, reinforces kind of domination and, and uh, discrimination. So super important in that way. The other thing is it's just very relieving 
because it helps us understand more about the dynamics that are happening and going on between ourselves and others and in different groups and why in some places we're just like yeah I'm doing all the things and I feel really confident and then in other places we can barely speak and we mumble our words and we can't look people in the eye and so it's all about power actually a lot, a lot of the time it's about power differences and I do remember the first time I learned about this I was just like oh my god so many things made sense I realized oh I felt really like low rank there that's why I you know could barely say a word or that's why this was happening or it just I think it's very um it's very helpful to understand what's going on in the world and that always just makes us feel more comfortable so what to actually do with it partly um I mean there's one there's a great that's actually bigger than this video but one thing I'll recommend is there's a great little free training I made in another um platform which I'll link uh, under this video that I would totally recommend checking out so it has some of this content and then it goes into a lot more about power and then has a bunch of really great exercises you can do to kind of apply the learning to your own lived experiences and start kind of going oh this is you know I have this kind of rank in this space and not in this and here's what I can do with the high ranks I have like what to do with high rank uh, it's a really great exercise there too now I promised that I would uh, recommend some other resources that Arnold Mindale and Julie Diamond so to I will link their websites in in the notes but this book Sitting in the Fire by Arnold Mindel it's like super spectacular I highly recommend that book really really popular book and the other one is Power a User's Guide by Julie Diamond now this is a really really cool book where Julie's taken process work power concepts and also a lot of her sort of experience working uh, in co organizational consulting stuff and really looks in, in leadership particularly and really looks at, at some particular leadership roles in society relative to power and she also has a bunch of exercises in here to help you kind of think about your own sort of experiences um, and context in life around power and rank and privilege so that's that's a really cool book as well so I hope that was super useful I'd love to hear any light bulb moments you had or questions that you're kind of now thinking about or other ideas you have around power that you think either intersect or really um, differ from this that'd be really really interesting learning as well um, thanks for watching and yeah catch you later bye